Hey everyone, C Money RN here. If you're brand new to my YouTube channel, my name is Christian, and I'm currently a second semester student attending Family Nurse Practitioner School at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. In this episode, I wanted to address something that I've talked about in my past two episodes, and that is the Oskies. Welcome to the episode. So like I said, I've addressed this in two previous episodes about me preparing for the Oskies. It's actually coming up this coming week on Monday, so I'm nervous, but at the same time, I'm also excited. And I wanted to take some time to explain in this video what is the OSCEs and what to expect when you're taking this examination. So the first question to ask is what exactly is the OSCEs? And what OSCEs stands for is Objective Structured Clinical Examination. Think of it as an advanced health assessment. If you recall, when you were studying for your associate's degree and your bachelor's degree, you had to do a full head-to-toe assessment when you were studying in nursing school, more likely during your first semester of studies. During that time, you were expected to do a full head-to-toe assessment, knocking out every single system, asking the right questions, and you more than likely had a script that you followed by. Well, if you were planning on having a script for this OSCEs, I want you to throw that plan out the window because the OSCEs isn't testing you on your ability to memorize facts and data. OSCEs is testing you to adapt to an environment where you have a special patient, which is typically an actor or an actress, who gives basic information, kind of like what you expect when you're walking into a regular doctor's office. And so when you have this simulated patient, you get to ask the patient questions about what brought them in there for, what is their chief complaint, and you also get to ask questions about their detailed history. During the OSCEs, what we're tested on is I'm tested on ability to answer the right questions. So let's say a patient comes in for chest pain. During the subjective portion, I'll be asking questions regarding, you know, what's the quality of the chest pain? What brought on the chest pain? What are some alleviating factors? What are factors that make it worse? You know, do you have any history of chest pain or heart issues in the family if that's what's the cause? Basically, you're a forensic investigator where you get to pick out clues at the very beginning and you get to put it towards the end of your objective assessment. Now, when you go into the objective assessment, which is the second part, this is where you actually get to do a physical assessment. Now, instead of doing a full head to toe assessment, what we're gonna be tested on is we need to be tested on assessing the three major systems or three or four, depending on what specifically applies to this patient. We look at systems that are you know, specifically relevant to the patient. So if it's chest pain, I'll be focusing on the heart, I'll be focusing on the lungs. You focus on specific parts of the assessment. That way, you gotta investigate what exactly is going on with the patient. Now, for this entire scenario, all I'm going to be getting is a total of about 15 minutes. So I'm going to spend the majority of my time asking questions. I spend the second half of the assessment doing my objectives. And then at the very end, what differentiates an OSCEs between this and an actual, you know, regular assessment is that I have to come up with medical diagnoses. So in preparation of coming up with the big medical diagnosis, what is the diagnosis that I'm going to give my patient, you know, that brought them into the hospital in the first place, I have to come up with three differential diagnoses. What are three other diagnoses that can kind of help me lead to this final diagnosis that I can quickly narrow down through tests, additional examinations, lab works, so I can come up with a definitive diagnosis. And for this final OSCEs, I have to come up with a final diagnosis. And what differentiates between this and my virtual clinical examination earlier in a couple of weeks is that I won't be getting feedback. Instead, once the test is done, the test is done, and I won't be able to find out whether I passed or not till the very end. After a calculation of scores, after I submit surveys, I essentially have to grade myself at the very end. And so once I do all that, that's when I'll be able to figure out how I did and whether or not I passed. Now, whether or not I passed really depends on whether or not I get this diagnosis right. If I don't get the diagnosis correct, then unfortunately I failed examination. I have to repeat it on a future date. So this is something that I've been actually planning for, you know, not just throughout my whole career of nurse practitioner school, but throughout my whole career of being a floor nurse. I've been a floor nurse for over two years and I've gotten to witness firsthand multiple patients, multiple diagnoses, and also get to practice on my bedside manner. So finally, I get to put this into practice I get to put in everything that I learned from nursing school, combine it to everything that I've practiced in a real life hospital scenario and put it towards a patient and take that role as a family nurse practitioner and come up with a diagnosis that I feel comfortable with. So instead of doing your head to toe, memorize scripts, memorizing facts, you have to use real life scenarios, real life experiences, you apply them, also backing up with evidence-based practice. So instead of saying, you know, this patient has to drink uh, more water, has to exercise, you have the backup of reasoning, logic, like why does this patient have to exercise? Why does this patient have to drink more water? 
Also, you give, you know, logic between ordering tests. Like, why do I have to order a complete blood count? Why does measuring this patient's white blood count, red blood cells, hemoglobin, why does that all matter? I have to give reasons on why to do so. And so when I come up with those reasons, then I'll be able to make sense and also help the patient understand at the same time why I'm ordering all these tests and why do I have this feeling that this is the diagnosis that they have come up with. So that's basically what the Oscars is and I kind of hope that helps you understand it more clearly. Mm -hmm.